We are days away from the January transfer window opening, and already Liverpool have confirmed their first signing of the window, that being Cody Gagpo from PSV Hindhoven. In today's video, we're going to take a look at Gagpo and see when he's eligible to play, and let you know everything about the player that Liverpool have signed. But not only that, but we take a look at the Reds' match against Leicester on the 30th, and discuss why the club have been handed a huge boost. There is so much to cover in today's video. And hello everybody, welcome back to the channel guys. Before we get into today's video, please do smash that like button and subscribe to the channel for daily Liverpool content. Liverpool have confirmed the signing of Netherlands forward Cody Gagbo, with reports suggesting the deal could end up costing the Reds as much as £44 million. Gagbo is believed to have signed a five and a half year contract with Liverpool, wasting no time in strengthening their attack ahead of the January transfer window. News of the deal to sign the 23-year-old broke following the winner Aston Villa on Boxing Day, with PSV confirming the agreement later that night. Liverpool have now made the announcement of their own after the player agreed personal terms and completed the medical on Wednesday. The Dutchman will wear the number 18 shirt at Anfield and told the club's official website, I feel really good. I'm really excited to be here. I'm looking forward to starting training and start playing for this amazing club. I think this is a great club for me to come in and try to show what I can do and try to help my team achieve more beautiful moments that they already did in the past years. I think for me personally, it's also good to develop here and there's a lot of great players here who I can learn a lot of things from. Gagpo won't be able to feature in the Reds' final game of 2022, a home tie against Leicester on Friday, but he could make his debut against Brentford next Monday on January 2nd. With Luis Diaz and Diego Jota sidelined with long-term injuries, Liverpool have taken the opportunity to bolster their attack in a similar deal to the one which saw Diaz arrive from Porto this time last year. Man United have been long linked as Gakpo's most likely destination, with Eric Ten Hag said to be an admirer, but it's Liverpool who have got their man. Able to operate in a number of attacking positions, Gagpo has already racked up an impressive 13 goals and 17 assists in 24 appearances at the club level this season. He also scored three goals in five games at the World Cup, helping his country to the quarter-finals alongside Virgil van Dijk, his national team captain and new Liverpool teammate. In this part of the video, we're going to discuss a little more in depth and discuss his strengths, weaknesses and style of play. First and foremost, I want to say how versatile Cody Gakpo actually is, and this is a big reason as to why the club have signed him. Having players who can play in more than one position has always been important for Liverpool under Klopp. It will also give the manager more scope to rest and rotate key players as well as mix it up more tactically, something Liverpool were forced to do quite regularly in the early months of this season as they struggled for form. Gagpo also has experience playing as an attacking midfielder, as he proved when used centrally for the Netherlands during the World Cup. Louis van Gaal's team operate without wingers, so Gagpo had to adapt his game to break into the national team. He has played not only as a part of the front two, but also as a number 10 behind the two strikers. Having said that, Gagpo is almost always on the left wing for PSV in a 4-2-3-1 or a 4-3-3 formation under head coach Ruud van Nistelrooy as his profile below from last season shows. He is 6 foot 2, which is tall for a winger and also adds to the feeling he has the attributes needed to develop into or be used as a number 9 in the future. Ryan Babel spoke in depth on his countrymen at the World Cup, saying, His skills are very diversified. He's able to go outside his fullback, he has the pace to run behind the defenders centrally, and he can cut inside from the left and shoot. He smells the doubt in defenders, and what you can see during games is how he's constantly looking around for opportunities. Sometimes he'll drop deep to receive the ball, sometimes he'll move to the side to create space, other times it's staying central. Liverpool were also attracted to Gakpo because of the qualities bad ball lists, particularly his directness when dribbling with the ball, his speed, energy and how comfortable he is running into space. His finishing stands out, he loves to shoot from just outside or near the edge of the box, he can strike the ball with either foot and often cleanly into either corner. In the past couple of seasons, however, he has also increased the number of chances he has created for his teammates. Gagpo has become a double threat for PSV, a player just as likely to score as he is to set up a teammate. Look how much he stands out among the players in the Eredivisie last season in this regard. 
While there is some cause to concern with Gagpo's defending and pressing, his defending intensity has increased this season, however, his recoveries and receptions have decreased. One area where he has shown promise is his delivery from corners. In October, Gakpo lofted a perfect corner into Luke de Jong, who headed it in for PSV in their 2-0 win over Arsenal in the Europa League. In the past two seasons, Liverpool have worked closely with neuroscientist Dr. Nicholas Hausler and Patrick Hanschek of German-based company Neuro11 to improve their success from dead ball situations. Gagpo is no stranger to extracurricular coaching, having spent the last 12 months working with tactic coach Lauren Villerink, the pair do weekly sessions to analyse Gagpo's performances. The work for Gagpo though starts now, he will need to adapt quickly, just like Diaz did 12 months ago, and ensure his dominant performances in the Eredivisie and Europa League become more consistent and can be replicated in the Premier League and Champions League for Liverpool. On Friday, Liverpool take on Leicester City and will want to try and get another three points on the board and follow up on the victory against Aston Villa. Leicester currently sit 13th in the league table and lost their most recent match against Newcastle 3-0 on Boxing Day. Ahead of the clash, Brendan Rodgers spoke with the media and provided an update that in turn gives Liverpool a major boost. That boost is that Leicester are set to be without James Madison. The attacking midfielder has been nursing a knee injury while away on England duty at the World Cup, but his latest setback is said to be an unrelated one. Madison has been a fawn in Liverpool's side in the past after producing some fine performances against the Reds, and Brendan Rodgers will miss his star player at Anfield on Friday night. The Leicester man missed the Fox's 3-0 loss against Newcastle on Boxing Day, and Rodgers confirmed he is set to see a specialist and has no timescale has been put on his return. Rogers said, It's a different part of his knee. He's obviously had a problem with the back of his knee. Now he has something at the front. This is something that has come from indirectly having an issue while he was away. He's just feeling something on the front of his knee and the medical team are trying to get to the bottom of. Whilst I don't like to celebrate opposition players getting injured, it's hard to deny that it does give Liverpool a boost as Madison is such a key player for them. Now, a player coach at Liverpool's academy, Jay Spearing, was expecting his most relaxed festive period in 17 years, only to be urgently rushed to hospital on Christmas Eve. The 34-year-old who returned to the Reds in a unique role earlier this year, having initially left back in 2013, says he was told his body was shutting down after blood tests before Christmas. In a post on Instagram, Spearing has revealed the details of the scare that saw him spend Christmas in hospital, where he was diagnosed with Addison's disease. He said, My first Christmas off in 17 years was a little different than I expected. After blood tests with the club on Christmas Eve, I was told I needed to attend hospital urgently before my body started to shut down. I was potentially hours, days away from going into something called Ardenal Crisis. After more observations and tests were carried out, they diagnosed me with Addison's disease. It took me a minute to get my head around it, but I am thankful now that I've been diagnosed. It can be controlled and managed through hormone replacement treatment, and it's not something that will allow or affect to dictate my life. Thinking back, I have been ignoring symptoms and changes in my body, a cracking tan for a start, for over a year without it being checked. Addison disease is a rare disorder of the adrenal glands, with symptoms including lack of energy, weakness, increased thirst, and low mood. The symptoms can get gradually worse over time, but as Spearing explains, it can be treated through hormone replacement. Liverpool will be hoping he is able to resume work as soon as possible, but the immediate priority should of course be his health and treatment. Liverpool fans, what do you make of the signing of Cody Gagpo? And what do you think the score will be against Leicester City on Friday? Let me know your thoughts down there in the comment section below. That brings us to the end of today's video. Please do smash that like button and subscribe to the channel for daily Liverpool content. Thank you and I'll see you all next time. Take care. Peace.